ask God to speak to you tonight. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name for your word. Speak to us by the Spirit tonight so that we receive from you in the name of Jesus. Let your word tonight be filled with the anointing and with power, with authority in Jesus' name. Let everyone hearing the sound of my voice tonight receive empowerment by the Holy Spirit to go to the next higher level yes, yes. where we are functioning with dominion and with authority over all things. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I started a series on Sunday on the believer's authority and dominion. The believer's what? I cannot hear you. The believer's authority and dominion. As believers in Christ, those who are in Christ, we have authority and dominion. And it's important for you to know just because you are not using that authority doesn't mean God have not given it. Right. It has been given. It is not up to God for you to use it. It is up to you because when something is being given, it is no longer the responsibility of the giver for the beneficiary to do something with it. If I have given you something, my job is done. Whatever you do with what I gave you is up to you. If you need some advice, you can come to me. But you don't need me to use it. That's right. Amen. Because what I gave you had my name on it. Once you present it, it has my name. And if my name carries supremacy, whenever they see my name, whatever you ask for, it will be given to you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. So just because you're not using the authority does not mean that it has not been given. And just because God has given this doesn't mean that you are actually using it. Did you catch that? Because it's easier to say, I have authority. Really? Do you? Yes. Can you show me? Because it goes beyond your confession. Authority doesn't get his power because you confess it. No, you confess faith. But when it comes to authority, your confession is barely a thing until your word becomes a word of power. Until it becomes a word filled with authority. When you're no longer begging, you are talking as someone who is in charge. Amen. Amen. So on Sunday I started this and I, tonight is part two. I told you it's a mini series, so it's only six volumes. Authority, if you didn't write on Sunday, you may write it down right now. Authority is defined by a delegated right to command authority is defined by a delegated right to command or to give order or to be in charge it is delegated is a right that is delegated you didn't work for it it is delegated to you <laughs> is above faith. You remember how I told you on Sunday that there are four levels of right? Do you remember it? Now for those of you that are not here, there are four levels. Most Christians are still in the first level. They're still, you know, there's like, oh God, please, can you help me pay my bill? Oh God, my car broke down. Oh God, please, oh God, don't let them take my, oh God, please. You, 
do you know what you're in fact you have not even awoken to the second level yet you're still in the, the first level called the level of acting mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> i told you on sunday in acting it is not faith that you need it is hope it is god's message that is going to give you because jesus said ask and it shall be given to you ask and it shall be given to you. For whosoever acts, receives. So, if you can ask it, God will give it. But, you will ask it. That's the first level. In that first level, all you need is hope. Because you're receiving it completely dependent on God's Loving kindness, God's mercy. Oh, God loves us. God so loved the world that He did what He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not die but have a blessing life. Right? So God loves us so much. So when you ask, He gives. Yes. But that's for babies. The second level is the level of faith. In this time, He didn't tell you to ask. He told you to go for it. Go for it. You want it? Yes. Then go get it. He said, believe. But then on the third level, oh Jesus, I wish you can understand it. We explain this on Sunday. The third level is not faith. It is authority. When you're functioning in authority, you do, it is not dependent on faith. Because it is a delegated right. It is a right delegated. So it is not dependent. I gave the example of a policeman. Yeah. How many of you, <laughs> that will be a ridiculous question, but I'll ask it anyway because I've already started. How many of you have ever seen a policeman before? <laughs> you see how funny that sounded? Yeah. You've seen a policeman. Does the policeman need to believe that he's a policeman? No. Does he need to believe? Now, does he, he has authority. Does he need faith in his authority? No, he does not need faith. He doesn't need it. Amen. So when you're functioning in authority, it is not faith that you need. You need knowledge. That's right. All the policeman needs to know is that he's a policeman. Yeah. That's all. He does not need to believe. Am I sure that this my uniform looks good? Am I sure that it's clean enough? Am I sure that if I tell somebody stop right there, that they will stop? Am I sure? He actually comes in front of the road and lifts sometimes like that. And he he didn't he have you ever seen a policeman trying to stop against that? Stop! No, they stand gently and they wave. And every time they wave, you know. That you have to stop. That's right. Not because you can, he is stronger than you physically, but because of his authority. Because he may be smaller in stature, you may be six four, he may be five seven, but as long as he's wearing the uniform and he wave the hands, and you're driving, you have to slow down. You know you have to. The only reason why you're not stopping is because you want to spend the night in jail. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to spend a night in jail, you have no choice than to stop. That is the level of authority. He does not need to believe it. All you need in authority is knowledge. Because authority is above faith. Are you listening to this? Yes. Then the fourth level is the level of dominion. Dominion is the top. For dominion, you don't need your faith because you you pass that level already for authority you need knowledge but for dominion you need an understanding Amen. you need an understanding because we define dominion to be a delegated authority to rule are you catching all of that a delegated authority to rule or authority to govern. Authority to reign. Oh, you can, add, you can add this if you're writing down. Dominion also means a delegated authority to have lordship 
over all things. To be Lord. Lordship. Amen. Amen. When Adam was created, he was given dominion, right? Yes. But you see, <coughs> not to be agreeing with that. How many of you have studied Genesis chapter 1? <coughs> I know you have. God created them and, and blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And subdue it and then he said and have dominion and have dominion have what no. dominion have lordship he didn't need a sword he doesn't need to go training how to have dominion no god said from today you have dominion over the fishes of the sea over the fowls of the air over every living thing and everything that is on this earth I give you dominion over them. But he lost it. And mankind become victims. That's right. So when a Christian does not function in authority and dominion, he will live a life of being constantly a victim. But when you come into authority, you cease from being a victim and become victors. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. This is good. 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 And on a Sunday, we talked about how that uh, Solomon, and you can write it down, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, quickly. I'm trying to just do a little highlight for those of you that were not here. But of course, you can go to YouTube and watch uh, the volume 1 or part 1 of that. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, quickly. Ecclesiastes chapter what? 4. 4. four. Quickly, 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 quickly. This is just for those who are not here on Sunday. Gotta be here. Don't miss Sunday. If you miss Sunday, you miss a whole lot. Amen. Look at verse 1. So I return and consider all. Have you seen what I'm reading? Yes. So I return and consider all what? The oppression. All what? The oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of thought that were oppressed. And they have no comfort. What is it that they didn't have? No comfort. And on the side of the oppressors, they have strength, but they have no comfort. That is the victim. They have no comfort because the man who was given the authority lost it. Mankind was supposed to have authority over everything else, but Adam lost it. So from Adam till Jesus, mankind were victims. Only few. That walked in power in the Old Testament have dominion. But I'm going to show you something tonight concerning authority and dominion. Because he said, they have no comforter. And of course, Jesus, the comforter comes into the picture and identified himself as one. You remember how that they gave him the scrolls of Isaiah to read in Luke chapter 4. Then he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me yes, yes. because he has anointed me come on say the spirit of the lord is upon me the spirit of god is upon me he has anointed me with authority and dominion to be a deliverer to be above all things can you say amen to that amen. jesus said the spirit of the lord is upon me he's anointed me to pick the good tidings he said, to sit at liberty, look at this, to, to sit at liberty, those that are bound, those that are captive, those that are hostage, to set them loose. Yes. You cannot rescue someone who is in trouble if you yourself is in trouble. Come on, somebody. Mm. The reason why most Christians are not able to help each other is because they themselves are in a bigger trouble. But for you to be a deliverer, for you to be the one who command deliverance and healing, you yourself have to be free. Amen. 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 You cannot, oh, let me, this is for babies, and then I'll say it. You cannot help someone who still smoke, come out of smoking as a Christian, while you still indulge into it. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. It means you yourself is not free. Yes. Right. You can't preach, don't drink. 
If your fridge have some fuel. Are you listening to me? If you want to preach it, please go and clear it out and start living a life of liberty in Christ. Then when you come, you can rescue someone. The Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed. But it looks like some Christians, they say that they are anointed, but they're not going about doing good, but they're going about causing troubles because they have no authority. They're going about ridiculing others and gossiping and talking against each other. They're going about hurting others. But Jesus was going about doing good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come and say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Then you must go and do good. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, How he was anointed. He went about. He went about. Not causing trouble, but doing good. Yes. Amen. 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 Doing good. Amen. When I was studying the church history in the 90s, when I went to Bible school, they, we were made to understand that the story that Jesus told of a prodigal son, <coughs> the story he told, you remember that story? Yes. The history have it that he told it in a bar and have everybody in the bar followed him. <coughs> he went in a bar, told the story, everybody left their drink and followed him. But when a Christian goes into a bar, no, I don't drink. That's just the first few minutes. Try to come back after 30 minutes. He has a bottle. Because he does not understand that when he walks into a bar, he becomes the light in the bar. He becomes the light. He told that story. And everybody followed him. Look at Peter, he preached this message. You know what the crowd said? What shall we do? When you function in authority, your word has power. Amen. Because authority is a delegated right to command. Jesus himself said, I will not leave you comfortless. Ecclesiastes say that they have no comfort, and that's why they are suffering. But then Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. Which means he himself is a comforter. Then he left and then he released the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So that means whatever that Jesus did, he said, you can do. But for a Christian to function effectively in the dominion, in the authority and dominion, he has to have dominion over the primary things. Romans chapter 6. You remember how I told you that the teaching on the believer's authority has been taught by many great men and women of God, including those that have come home to be with the Lord. But why isn't the Christian functioning in that authority? Because there's some things that they have not understood yet. And that's what this service is all about. Romans chapter 6. Have you seen it? Yes. Only one person said yes. 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 Thank you. Have you seen it? Yes. Thank you. That way I know you have seen it. Don't make me guess. All right. Look at this. Look at verse 9. And I want you to pay close attention to this. We're talking about authority and dominion, right? Yes. yes. And this is number two of it. Now look at verse 9. I want you to pay close attention. Verse 9. Because most Christians have not gotten to this level yet. And they're trying to command bigger things. Mm. And you will hear what I'm about to say. And I want you to write it down when I say what I need to say. Verse, four, uh, verse 9 says, Knowing this, that Christ, being raised from the dead, doeth what? Died no more. Then it says, Death have no more dominion over him for in that he died he died under sin once 
But in that he liveth, he liveth unto who? God. Are you following this? Verse 11. Then he said, likewise. Everybody say, likewise. Likewise. Say, likewise, reckon ye yourself also to be dead indeed under sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, yes. He said, Christ who died, death has no more dominion over him. And in that he died, he died under sin, but in that he lived, he lives uh, unto God. Yes. Then he said, death has no more dominion over him. Because now he's living unto God. Amen. Come and say, I live for God. I live for God. He said, as long as he lives for God, death has no more dominion over him. Amen. Are you listening to this? Yes. Now, look at that verse 11 again. What is the first word that you saw in verse 11? Likewise. Likewise. What does it mean by likewise? In the same way. Other translation will say, in the same manner. <coughs> Reckon you yourself. The Greek word is log. is the man where we get the English word log. In other words, reckon you yourself to be dead. Indeed. Unto what? Sin. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12. Look at it. Let not sin therefore reign. Here go that word again. We say dominion is defined by a delegated authority to rule or reign or have lordship over. So verse 12 says, let not sin therefore have dominion in your mortal bodies that you should obey it in the lost thereof. Neither you, you, your members, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but you yourself unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of what? Righteousness, righteousness unto who? Unto God. Verse 14. Read it, everybody go. I cannot hear you. For sin. Did you catch it? For sin shall not have rulership, shall not have lordship, shall not be your boss. Because you are no longer under him. That's right. You are now his boss. Ah, glory to God. And he is yeah. under you. Yeah. So if you cannot have dominion over sin, mm, my God. how can you have dominion over everything else? Hallelujah. Are you listening? Yes. Yes. Because most Christians they're trying to command. I command wealth, I command that, I command I rule. But then at the end of the day, you watch, they're not ruling because there's a primary thing is that they haven't even gotten over yet. See? Come on, teach. Yes, sir. You cannot bypass and say, reckon you yourself as dead, but alive unto God. Mm -hmm. Then he said, let not sin rule over you. He said, sin shall not have rulership or lordship over you. Because you are no longer his servant. You used to be, but he tells you, you died. Amen. And God raised you from the dead. And now he raised you from the dead. He puts you above sin. Hey, glory, glory. Then he said, when you are put above, you should not go below to be a servant of sin where you should be the boss of it. Amen. 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 Are you listening to this? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Then try to command, oh, I, I command the cargo to come. And then you command it, it didn't come because you have not ruled over sin yet. It's sin, when you're commanding it, you are still a slave to sin. Where you should be the boss, he said, let no 
not sin therefore reign over you because you are not his servant. Come and say, I am not a servant of sin. I'm not a servant of sin. I am the boss. I, am the boss. I have authority I have a and dominion and over sins. Over sins. In the name of you know what it means to be a slave? A slave means whatever the boss calls you answer. To be a slave to sin means whenever sin comes, whenever sin calls, you answer. Whenever, whether it's in the night, the sin calls, you answer. He called in the afternoon, you answer. He called in the night, you answer. Because he is the boss. But he said, you are no longer his say. This time, you are the boss. Mm. You get to tell him to get out of your territory. Mm. Yes, sir. Are you listening to this? Hallelujah. We're talking about having authority and dominion. For you to understand how you function, you got you to take care of the primary things. Those are primary things. God is wanting you to command cities and rule over nations. But you can't even rule over things that was given under your feet. Hey, glory. How are you going to be able to? How are you going to be able to? It's like asking God, oh God, give me one million. While God is watching to see how you're doing with 100,000. <laughs> and you can't even do nothing with it yet. You can't even so sin and you're still indulging your time. And then you're God, I need one million dollars in the name of Jesus. And God said, well, I want you to do something with 50,000 first. If God will respond, I think that's what he would say. <laughs> because one of the things is God is a businessman. Yes, he is. He know, I mean, the numbers that you're trying to understand, he created all things. He knows the number. He is the Lord and the creator of mathematics. Yes. He said, let not sin therefore reign in your mental bodies. He said, for sin shall not have dominion. That means he's telling you that you used to be a slave. You used to be a servant. But now you have been put above. So down from above, climb down to be a servant when you should be a boss. How many of you would like to be promoted to be the manager or the CEO of a company and you come the next day dressed like an employee when you have become the boss? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> are, you, are you following this? Yes. It tells you that you're no longer an employee. You're no longer a worker. You're no longer a servant. You are the boss. So since you're the boss, reckon you yourself to be the boss. Think that way. Don't try to think any differently. Think as the boss and do as the boss and talk as the boss. Don't beg as a servant. Hey, glory to God. But when you understand this thing, you, your mindset is different. There are things that you no longer beg for. You no longer beg God for anything. Like, oh God, I really want to stop. If you can help me stop, help you stop, help me stop. He delegated right for you to command. He delegated right for you to rule. You don't need to beg him. You just use your delegation. It's like a policeman seeing uh, 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 a car that is, you know, driving and he wants to stop the car. Oh, I hope he stops. I hope he stops. Oh, please. Oh, I hope that if I wave my hands and then the car will stop. Oh, please. Do you see any policeman begging to be a policeman? No. The one thing they know so much is their authority. Amen. They don't ask twice. If they have to act twice, it means you're in a big trouble. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if they stop you and you try to pass, uh, yeah. he doesn't need to fight you. He just grab the radio and radio the rest of the crew. <laughs> that when you disobey him, he thought it was him that you disobeyed. No, you disobeyed his authority. He, he, you, you didn't disobey the police. No, you disobeyed the state of Texas. So when he radios the rest of his friends, before you know it, there are 10 police cars following you. You are already a suit. Because at the end of the day, when they don't radio you, your charges, you wonder, I, I did all of that. You remember what I told you on Sunday that there was this chase that lasted barely 30 minutes. And then when they finally got the guy, then I was reading the charges and it was about 19 different charges. I was like, how can you? Commit that many crimes for being chased for only 30 minutes. I didn't know how they count it until one of my uh, uh, friends who's a police explained that to me. That the moment they stop you and you drive past, 
That's one charge. And because you're running, you're not driving light. You're not driving accurately. If there's a red light that is turning on you, that's one charge. And if they get closer and try to stop you and you didn't stop, that's one charge. This guy accumulated 19 charges in 30 minutes for just being on the car, driving. Because when he disobeyed the authority, hey, come on. he become a, he become a soup for the police. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He said, sin shall not have dominion. Come and say this. Say, sin, sin. Have, no have no dominion over me. Over me. I have authority and dominion. I rule over sin. I am not subject to sin. I am not subject to unrighteousness because I have authority and dominion over sin. Can you say amen to that? Let me show you something that will really surprise you that when God delegates it, it is up to you to use it. And if you don't use it, you cannot hold God responsible. Genesis chapter 4. Quick. Genesis chapter what? Oh. Hallelujah. Um. You remember Cain, right? Mm -hmm. How that Cain killed his brother. Talk to me now. Yes. yes. So that's a very popular story, right? Yes. There is something there that was given to him that he didn't use right before he killed his brother. God gave it to him. If he had used it, he wouldn't have killed his brother. But he didn't use it. And God was specific. Are you listening to this? Genesis chapter what? Look at verse 5. I want to narrow it down. To get to where I'm going. Look at verse 5. We know that Abel brought a sacrifice and God accepted it. And Cain brought, well he didn't actually bring a good one. He just chose whatever. And then bring it. And um, God didn't respect it. And he was angry. Look at verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was what? Rock. I can hear you. Rock. Cain was very rough. Yes. And his countenance fell. Mm -hmm. Angry and sad. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou rough? Why is thy countenance fallen? I want you to read verse 7. One to go. <laughs> Are you reading with it? I say read verse 7. One to go. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. I want you to pay close attention to how God talked to this man. He's angry. And he's already thinking of doing something wrong. God said in verse 7, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth where? At the door. Not inside, but at the door. He says, Sin lieth at the door. And then unto thee shall be his desire. Whose desire? The sin's desire. Then he said, Thou shalt rule over him. Does anybody have NIV? NIV. Does anybody have NIV? Well, all of you are in the church with King James. I love that. Does anybody have any other translation? What translation is that? All right, can you read NIV louder? 
Verse 7 only. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Uh huh. But if you do not that what is right, sin is crushing out your door. Uh huh. A desire to have it. His desire to have you, but you must master it. He said, Behold, sin is at the door. He didn't say sin is inside. That's right. Sin is at the door. Yeah. And he wants you. But then God delegated dominion over Cain. He said, Thou shalt rule over it. Thou shalt have dominion. Thou shalt have lordship over it. He said, Thou shalt be his master. But right there, you see, God delegated authority and dominion for the person that is knocking at the door. That person wants to take Cain so that Cain will kill his brother. Are you listening to this? Yeah. God said, You shall rule over that is. That is God delegating authority and dominion for Cain. So you shall rule over him. He actually addressed the sin as him, telling you who we are actually talking about. And his name is what? The devil. Mm -hmm. So behold, he's at the door, wanting to get in. And he wants to get in to take you down. But then he said, you shall have dominion over him. So right here, Evidently, God delegated authority to Cain to rule over who is on the door by the name of devil. And then Cain, after receiving a delegated power to command, after receiving a delegated authority to rule and have dominion, he allowed his emotion to override his authority and kill his brother. Write this down. Never allow your emotion to supersede or rule, supersede or overrule your authority and your dominion. Are you listening to this? You want me to repeat that again? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before I repeat it, this is where it is going from. Look at first, so that you understand what you're writing. Cain couldn't, couldn't have killed his brother. Couldn't have killed his brother. Okay? Now, God delegated authority. Are you listening to this? Yeah. And dominion, he says, someone is at the door. It's too loud. Someone is at the door. He wants to take you down. He actually, you are his desire. He wants you. But then God says, you will rule over him. That is a delegation for Cain to rule. But Cain was still angry. Authority and dominion have just been given to him. But he allowed his emotion, his anger, to supersede and override his authority. Yes. That's why I say, right, do not allow your emotions. Do not allow your emotions to supersede or overrule your authority and dominion. Do not allow, keep writing, or you can put excitement, anger. Do not allow it. Because there, it is an emotion in the type of anger. In another case, it could have been excitement. As long as it's emotion, do not allow your emotion to override your authority and your dominion. Because that's what happened here. Cain had 
hundred percent delegation of authority and dominion and he still went ahead and killed his brother because he rather have his anger rule over him than him being the boss to rule over who is on the door and he went ahead and killed his brother wow. with that much authority god actually said oh jesus christ when i read uh, uh amplified put it this way look at this quickly let me show you something on amplified version because you see, to understand how authority functions, you have to have an insight that is not tied to your emotion. It is tied to your understanding and knowledge. Because sometimes, in this case, it was angry. It was anger. Could have been excitement. How many do you realize that sometimes people are so excited that they make some very funny mistake and you're wondering, why did they do that? And they will even say, well, you know, I was so excited and I kind of lost it. And they will actually explain it like that. As a reason why they did it. Emotion is not given to you to be your boss. It is given to you to express yourself. If you're writing that you can write this. Emotion is not your boss. Emotion is your servant. It is given to you for expression. For enjoyment. It is not supposed to take you out. In any day, your emotion become your boss. You are in trouble. Amen. Because that's what happened to Cain here. Cain had to kill this brother because he rather <coughs> have his anger be his boss than him being the boss of who is on the door. God said, someone is at the door and that person is not the no good but have given you authority to be his boss. And Cain said, no, my anger is my boss. And I am his servant. And he killed his brother. And now he not only killed his brother, he has to make the highest record on the planet Earth to be the first man on this earth who committed first degree murder. And I was like, man, he really could have escaped this. But no, his emotion rather be the boss. Could have been excitement. Could have been... hurt when someone says something that you don't like it doesn't mean that you're overly angry but don't allow what somebody else say to cause you to all forget that you have authority yes. and dominion yes. don't allow your your that's why everything is boxing in emotion because the only thing that destroyed came here is not because he killed his brother listen to this is that he reduced himself from a boss to a servant to sin. That's why he said, sin shall not have dominion over you. Shall not have dominion over you. When your children do something that you don't like, when you get angry, watch your reaction because that anger could, could, could make you a slave to your own emotions. As a parent, don't call your children names. If you want to call them, then call them glorious names. When you get angry, it is the wrong time to call them names. You want to call them names, let it be when you are so spiritual. Hallelujah. My son is full of the Holy Ghost. He is the best in school. My daughter is a righteous daughter. She is the best in school, best in sports. But don't let anger. Because most parents are the ones that destroy the future of their children. By anger. Come on, Most parents. They say, oh, my daughter, she's up to no good. Young Cho, uh, uh, Young Cho have this testimony of a woman who came for him to pray, a mother. He said, Pastor, Pastor, help me, help me. My daughter is driving the whole family crazy. And the young teacher will be like, well, I can see it because you sounded like you're crazy too. Help me, my daughter is driving the whole family mad. The young teacher said, I, I cannot pray because if I pray, it won't work. If you're sounding like this, then he gave me a principle. You go home and you change your language. 
Take your language that your daughter is born again, is full of the Holy Spirit. He's a good Christian. And she suddenly left the office because she didn't get the prayer that her daughter is driving the whole family mad. And after three weeks, she stopped practicing. My daughter is a good Christian, full of the Holy Ghost. She's making good grace and everything. You know, she's, uh, after three weeks, she's already, she says, Pastor, pray, pray, because my daughter is full of the Holy Ghost. She's a good Christian. Uh, you don't just say, uh, hey, now we can pray. The lesson there is, she's a woman that loves her daughter, but she's letting the activities of the daughter run her mat too. Learn how to react in a situation that is not a very good situation. Because your reaction can make the situation worse. Like a, a, a father says, because you did this, I disown you. Yeah. <laughs> and the devil will say, Amen. Because he will be the only one saying amen. The moment you say that, yeah. do you know, spiritually, according to the spiritual law, you just cross line. From that day, things will start going wrong. Yeah, that's right. You don't disown something that is yours. That's right, come on. You disown something that is trying to become yours when you don't want it. You understand what I mean? Yes. Like, <laughs> I was talking to a woman of God on the phone. It was messing up. And he talked to the phone. The phone didn't respond. He said, this phone, I give you between now and 24 hours to function right. Otherwise, you're fired after tomorrow. <laughs> I'll get another one. As funny as that sounded, but that's, that's authority. Mm -hmm. That's authority. Mm -hmm. Then the next day, I call her and said, so... If the phone loses its job, or is the phone still keeping its job? Then she said, oh, the phone is, uh, is back on track, but he better watch it because I can replace him in a moment of time. Do you understand what I mean? This is a communication between a woman and a phone. The phone is taking a life after what is said. You better function the way you ought to function, otherwise after tomorrow you're fired. Amen. You understand what I mean? It's authority. Cain has leverage of authority and dominion that he didn't use. Come and say, I have authority. I have authority. Say it one more time. I have authority. I have authority, I have authority over, my over my emotions, over my everything. Over my everything. Luke chapter 9. Quickly. Now be closing with this. Luke chapter what? Nine. It's important for you to understand that until we become, the reason why I'm going this direction is because it is my concern. There are books and great teachings written about believers' authorities. But now when I look at Christians, they're not functioning in them. Then I go into the book again, see if there's anything wrong with the book. And the books are all great. I try to listen because I've, I've read all the books that is written about authority. But why isn't the Christian? Functioning in them because they have not even crossed the primary level called having dominion over sin. They're still indulging. Amen. After confessing your Lord, confessing Christ as your Lord, after being a Christian for a year or two or even more, how is it that you still give in to something that is already below your feet? And you're wondering why commanding the bigger things does not respond. Because God is looking at you taking care of the small things. A Christian who is trying to argue a scripture about drinking. He's trying to argue it. He's been born again for, for, for more than 30 years. But he's trying to argue drinking. He is actually indeed sitting down trying to fight and argue it. So that he can drink because he doesn't understand that it's the place above. He 
can boldly tell you, oh, there's no place that the Bible says we shouldn't smoke. He can actually say that. Because he has not understood his new life. Even though he's been living this new life for years. He's still a slave to sin. When another sin called, he answered, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. Whether in the morning, he answers to it. Anytime. Because to be a slave means whenever the call is made, you have to answer. Wow. But after tonight, hey, Lord. you will demonstrate your dominion, your authority over sin. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Cain allowed. Do you see the choices? The, the man was given a choice. When God was talking to him, he wasn't killing his brother yet. This was going to happen later. God gave him the choice that, hey, man, you have an enemy on the door knocking and he wants to take you down. I mean, God was so kind of telling him that this guy outside the door is out to get you. But I have given you authority and dominion. That's right. And Cain heard all of that, received all of that. And still allow his emotion to rule on by his authority. Listen, authority is expensive. Dominion is priceless. Don't give it out to the enemy too easy. Amen. Don't ever give it out. Don't ever negotiate it. Exercises every time. That's all they need. That's what Romans says. He said, likewise, reckon yourself as the person who died and was raised. And now that you're raised, he said, sin shall no more have dominion over you. He said, this time that you're raised, you are now the boss. You, you better don't wake up tomorrow and try to be an employee. No, you are now the boss. Luke chapter 9, quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 1. And then he called the 12 disciples. How many did he call? 12. He called them together and he gave them power and what? Authority. Over what? All. How many? All. Did he say all? Mm -hmm. He gave them authority over all. All. There's some people they can talk to them when it comes to that area, but when it comes to that area, they can't. He said he gave them authority over how many devils? All. All. Oh. And then he also gave them authority to cure diseases. <laughs> Come and say, I'm a curer of disease. I'm a curer of disease. Unto the glory of God. Glory. Because I have authority Without and dominion. Amen. Are you listening to this? He gave them authority. How did he give it? How, how, how did he give it to them? He actually said, I give you authority over all devils. And they went out. Go to chapter 10 quickly. They went out and used that authority. And when they brought the report, he raised the bar. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 10. Have you seen it? Yeah. Look at verse... 17. Have you seen it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the seventies return again with what? Joy. How did they return? Joy. Now they've been given authority, so they went out, they used it, and they returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. They say, Hey, what you gave us, he walked. Then Jesus say unto them I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven behold 
I give unto you what? To do what? To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Come and say I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable. Because I have authority. And dominion. Then when they use it, it works. They came back. They said, Master, it works. All the devils, they were bowing to us. They said, now, from now, I want you to start walking over them. Trap, trample upon them. And all the abilities of the devils from today, walk on them. How can God say, walk on them and suddenly you're struggling together. God said, walk on them. They're under your feet. You have authority to walk on them. Amen. If you cannot walk on them, you might take authority to get a new car. They're sneaking and take your car because you have not walked on their head. Amen. Glory. So if you can't command the little thing and you command the big thing, he's not from the little thing and come and take your big things. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. But when you understand that you have to put him under your feet so that when you get a car, your car doesn't have to be taken away. You don't have to lose your house. You don't have to lose your husband. You don't have to lose your marriage. You don't have to lose your job because the devil is already under your feet because you have authority and dominion over all the devils. Can you be on your feet, everybody? Right now, you're going to take authority. This is between you and your business. This is you handling your business because God has given you authority and dominion. What area do you need to take authority on? Tonight, I want you to open your mouth. Open your mouth and begin to find those areas that you need to rule over. That you need to have lordship over. Those areas that you need to rule over. Do you need to rule over any kind of wickedness in your life? You got to rule over tonight. Do you need to rule over anything in your business, in your job? Rule over your finances? Hallelujah. I take authority. I take dominion. I take authority. I take dominion. I take dominion. Hallelujah. Take authority. Take dominion. Over your finances. Over your finances. Over your finances. Over your finances. 